Hello again, it's time for more bookmarks. So in the last episode, we extended our GraphQL query to not only fetch a person, but also to query some bookmarks. And you see these on the right hand side. And I added some more bookmarks. You see currently there are five bookmarks, which have different tags, but you see there that there's one CSS tricks that has a favorite tag. So what I want to do now is that I want to have a section that shows all my bookmarks. And I want to have a section here in between that really only show my favorite bookmarks. And you could of course do that by filtering in the client side. So in here in React, but I want to do it uh, with GraphQL. So how would we do this? So we can go back here and this is the query that we had. And before we get started querying more data, I want to show you a little trick. So GraphQL supports something that is called fragments. And what we can do here is we can define a selection of fields that we want to reuse. So when we go in here, we can say that we want to have a fragment bookmark fields on the type bookmark, and it should be basically this body here. So we can copy this one and let's quickly prettify that. So that looks good. And the cool thing is now that we, if we want to have the same data structure in several places, we can go in here and we can just reuse it. So this now should look exactly the same. So how can we now figure out which bookmarks um, are my favorites? For that, we have to flip the query around a little bit. So let's start by um, querying the tags. And I'm gonna use a filter here so we can do where, and this is now field dependent, right? So we can say, I want to have all the tags where the title contains favorite. And then we can go in here, we can grab the items and let's grab the title. Let's see if that works. Cool, that looks good to me. So, and you might have spotted it already. What we can do now is there's also this field that is called linked from. So this field gives you basically collections that are linking to this specific entry that you're querying. So we can go in again, we can get all the bookmarks that are linking to the tag favorite. And now we can grab the items of this. And here we wanna reuse our fragment because we would need the same data structures of the original bookmark collection. So we can fire this query up and unfortunately we're running into an error here. So that is the thing with GraphQL. As you see, you can write very, very complex queries and you can go into data and you can query what you want. From an API perspective, this can result in pretty hefty queries, which means that there has to be a limit and at some point you have to paginate the data that you want to get. And the contentful GraphQL API is now telling us that this query cannot be executed because we're going over a limit of 11,000 and we have a query cost of, yes, this is six, seven digits of over a million. So where is this high number coming from? Let's comment out our query and let me explain to you how contentful query complexity works. So let's create a new query here and we can go in with, let's go with the bookmarks again, bookmark collection, and we can go in items and we can get the title. So when we now open the dev tools, um, the requests on the responses from the GraphQL API include a header that tells you how expensive your query actually is. So when we go to request, where's the response? response we have here x contentful GraphQL query cost, which is 100. So where's the 100 coming from? So when we query this collection endpoint, there is also this limit argument, which defaults to 100. And the contentful GraphQL query cost is the possible number of entries that you're querying. So in this case, the query cost of this one is 100. If we limit this one to 50, for example, we will get a query cost of a 50. Here we go, here we have the 50. So let's now go in because we know that bookmarks have tags and we do the same thing. We do items and we do the title again. So when we now check the requests again and the query cost of it, you will see that it's 5,050. So where's this 5,050 coming from? Remember, we are dealing with limit again, and here we have a limit of a default limit of 100, which we, for example, see here. So let's close the documentation for a second. So this here could result potentially, even though it's not uh, responded right now with that many entries, but potentially this could lead to 50 
times 100 entries that are queried, which makes 5,000 here, and I didn't update that one, and 50 here, which comes together to 5,050. And this is how the GraphQL query cost in Contentful works. So you always have to watch out a little bit for the limit parameter because it's the easiest way to bring down the cost of your queries. So let's bring down this 1 million, shall we? So the first thing that I see is that this tag collection query here or the field query here only results in one entry being returned. So we can limit this one, which brings us down from 1 million to 20,000 already, which is pretty nice. And currently we're only dealing with, um, I don't know, five or six different tags. So it's right now safe to also put a limit in here, let's say to 10. And with this, we get our data. So let's close the DevTools here and let's check the, if the data is correct. We have now the bookmark collection and we have also the tag collection that returns one bookmark here, which looks pretty good to me. Let me show you another pro tip. You can also rename the fields. So you can do here, for example, favorite tag. You can do this. Let's do favorite tag collection so that we know that is an array. And let's go to the bookmark collection and let's call this all bookmarks. And this works on any level. So we couldn't also rename these one here. So when we now do this query, we see that we have a favorite tag collection and that we have all bookmarks here. Cool. I think this is ready to go. So let's copy this query and you see that we're already, we advanced quite a little bit here. So let's go up and let's paste the query. And the first thing that we have to do, we renamed some stuff. So let's rename this one and go back in here. So our bookmark collection is now all bookmarks. So let's save this and see if it still works. Compiling. Still works. Cool. And then we had the collection of favorite tags. Let's grab this one here. And we know that the favorite bookmarks, so let's destructure this. So first of all, we have a favorite tag, which is favorite tag collection items. And the first one here instead of this collection. And then we can go with favorite tag, Let's go in here, we can do this. So we can say we can copy this line and we can go with favorite tag. Let's cheat a little bit again. It was favorite tag linked from linked from bookmark collection and then items. And here we go. Nice. So what we just did is that we extended the query to um, fetch several collections, we included fragments, and we dealt with uh, query complexity cost by limiting some of the collections. And I think that is pretty good for this episode. In the next episode, we will learn about GraphQL variables. See you then.